Alright, I gotta be honest. The Mandalorian is really starting to get on my nerves. Hey everyone, this is Justin Proper here, coming at you with a belated review for The Mandalorian Episode 5, or Chapter 5, The Gunslinger. And for full transparency, I did record something yesterday, but I wasn't really satisfied with it. So I took this opportunity to just kind of think about exactly how I felt about this episode. Because it's a little different than how I felt about the other episodes, I rather enjoyed them. But at this point, we're on Episode 5, and we have three more left. And so far, aside from the first three episodes, really nothing has happened. I mean, at least with the first three episodes, you had different twists, you had a story, you had a direction of where it was gonna go. But now, since we've gotten in that direction, not much else has really progressed. The series has kind of been focused on Baby Yoda being the centerpiece of this story. And to me, that's not a big issue, but it is called The Mandalorian. He's not really doing anything except for trying to protect the little cute thing that'll sell merchandise. And this episode in particular did bother me as well because of the immense amount of member berries that were present throughout the entire episode. Probably because it takes place all on Tatooine, which is just a place that just flourishes with these kind of nostalgic vibes. I mean, you had the cantina, you had the loading Dog. I mean, I thought for a second we were gonna go to the Lars homestead. Also, there weren't that many people in Moss Eisley, which was really strange to me. Also, there are droids at the cantina now. I don't know. I thought that they weren't allowed, but I guess Tatooine has gotten pretty progressive, kind of like the actual franchise. <laughs> Interesting parallels there, but what basically happens is the Mandalorian gets in some sort of space dogfight and his ship gets damaged, so he has to go to Tatooine, which is by chance the nearest inhabitable planet. You see some pit droids. He has to pay a little extra for the repairs, so he goes to this bounty hunter guy in the famous cantina. His name is Toro. And then they get on speeders, and then they go meet Tusken Raiders, which we all remember. They do some sign language thing. The Mandalorian is able to communicate with them, which is kind of interesting. And they go find the bounty, whose name is Fennec Shand or something. They go up to this little hill where she's sniping them off, and the Mandalorian makes a remark like, hey, we can't just, you know, Rusher, she has the high ground. Oh, we remember that quote too. So they wait until nightfall and then basically Stormer and then one of the speeders breaks and Toro goes up and gets his ass whooped. And then the Mandalorian comes up from behind, handcuffs her, and for some reason, Toro convinces the Mandalorian to go get the dew back that's like, I don't know, like a day away by walking, leaving the one speeder there that works along with the bounty and the guy that you're supposedly working with. Dude, I don't know what you expected, but you're setting yourself up for failure. But basically, Fennec tells Toro, hey, this Mandalorian guy really fucks shit up in Navarro. He has this big bounty, this big target. They say it's a child. Hey, maybe his armor is also worth more than the bounty, but it also will make you a legend. And so he shoots her because he basically got all he needed from her. Then he takes the speeder, goes back to Moss Eisley, kidnaps Baby Yoda, who's just been left with this random lady and this complete stranger. Great job. Mandalorian, you did a fantastic job making sure that Baby Yoda was kept safe by leaving him there where anybody could find him. And then he approaches Toro, who has Baby Yoda and that lady, I think her name's Peli, holding him hostage. They say, oh yeah, look who's calling the shots now. Like, you didn't do that already when you sent him to get the do back. And then he outsmarts him by throwing a flash grenade thing that they used earlier and basically gets the better of him and shoots him. So, yeah, we have all, all the storylines that came up are just now gone, and then they take off with Baby Yoda, and then someone goes up to Fennec, the, the dead body, and just kneels over, guess it's a friend, and then the, it's over. Basically, this was just an episode that was pretty mediocre, and in all honesty, like, I understand people are just like, oh, well, at least it's not woke. Well, just because something isn't woke, doesn't mean it's good, and, you know, same vice versa. I would prefer to watch a movie that is woke, but also good, as opposed to something that isn't woke, and it's just, eh, just doesn't do it for me. I mean, yeah, I mean, I get the counter-argument, but at the same time, I don't want to just settle for something that just 
doesn't push identity politics. I mean, just because it doesn't do that doesn't mean it isn't mediocre. And so far, The Mandalorian has kind of been overall lackluster and, and disappointing and underwhelming. I just expected a little bit more than this. I mean, the first few episodes were interesting, but now, since we only have eight episodes and we have two of them basically that are filler, the next one's probably going to be filler, and we still don't see Bill Burr. I'm waiting for him on his Bostonian planet where everyone talks in a Boston accent. I expect nothing less than that. And what it basically comes down to is that, you know, this whole series is just based around the Mandalorian taking care of baby Yoda, which is just ridiculous because he's 50 years old and he's still a baby. Yoda lives to be 900 years old. So if this series is going to continue and it's going to be healthy and not repetitive, there's only one thing that you have to do. You have to kill off Baby Yoda. Look, I'm sorry, I know he's cute and all, but look, if this whole thing is just revolved around Baby Yoda being saved, being protected for the entire series, then it's gonna get stale, it's gonna get old, sacrifices have to be made, otherwise the Mandalorian's grandchildren will be on their deathbeds by the time Baby Yoda learns how to ride a tricycle. I don't want to see that. I don't, I don't want to deal with... with uh, like, seriously, with, with the rise of Skywalker coming out, if Baby Yoda is still alive, then maybe Baby Yoda would do something, or maybe maybe he's still in, uh, going through puberty, or uh, he's a teenager. Fifty years and you're still a toddler who hasn't really spoken, doesn't haven't said their first word yet. You can't continue on just protecting Baby Yoda. Baby Yoda has to be independent at some point. Wield a lightsaber will be shipped off to some academy, which would actually be Luke Skywalker's and. Well, we know how that goes. So, really, there's nothing that you can do with Baby Yoda at this point, except kill him. And I think that that's the direction, if they're smart, that's the direction where they're going. But they've also set themselves up in a corner where, if they do that, then where else do they go? So, yeah, I think in a way, Baby Yoda has kind of screwed over the series. But that's just, that's just me. If people, someone has a different opinion, if there's something that I'm not getting, because right now, I have just, it's taken me five episodes to finally reach the point where I'm like, okay, I think this is getting stale, this isn't going anywhere. Unless you kill off Baby Yoda, there's really nowhere you can go. And hey, if you like this video, hit the like button, and if you're new here, hit the subscribe button. I hope you enjoyed this review. It wasn't so much of a review as it was me ranting about how much I didn't really like the whole idea of Baby Yoda being saved over and over again. But hey, let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section down below, and please share this video. I would greatly appreciate it. And while you're here, go join my Patreon. It's in the link in the description down below. Shout out to what an ABC. He is awesome. He is my proper compadre. Thank you all so much, everyone. Live long and proper, and as always, have a great day.